I'm Kelsey Mpuchik, and welcome to BuzzFeed Multiplayer's The Dungeon Club. It's a live role-playing show that follows three regular teenagers played by adults who accidentally end up on a quest in a fantasy realm. If you are new to live role-playing, it's essentially a game where our DM or dungeon master leads the players through a story where we improvise scenes and work together in real time to solve problems. None of us know where the story is going next, except of course, our DM. At times we will let the DM know what we want to do and he will tell us if we succeed or fail based off of dice rolls. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Mitch Van Bree. Uh, I am the front man of a band called Twin Chameleon and all my handles are Twin Chameleon. It's your boy, Ify Wadi Way, uh, and I'm playing, you know, Daniel Wolf Percy. If it, he's a fan of D&D, he's a D&D &D guy, he plays, so mm. he's no stranger. Hello, everybody. I am Jenny Lorenzo, and I always say hello in the most bizarre of ways. It sounds just like my mother. Doubt she's watching. But I love you, Mom. Uh, <laughs> I play Artemia Gomez, and I'm Cuban-American, and I play a bunch of characters on the internet. The main one that people know me for is playing a Cuban grandma, and she has no name. Her name is just Abuela, which means grandma in Spanish. And uh, yeah, that's my little fun fact. I should have maybe brought this up many episodes ago, but here we are. And I, of course, am Kelsey and PGK. I play Heather Banks, our theater nerd bard. Fairly fun fact about Heather is that Heather is bi. She had a crush on Darla, actually, who was Daniel's girlfriend, but had because she, her heart There's was completely broken in, in episode there one. We got it back to a sad fact. Her heart was no. completely broken in episode one. Every episode, we invite a new guest player to join our campaign. And today's guest is the incredible Christina Ariel, an actor, host, and TTRPG streamer, best known for Ooh, Sirens Ooh. of the Realms, Critical Role Honey Heist, and the upcoming Pirates of Leviathan on Dropout Dimension, Dropouts Dimension 20. She's an avid activist for inclusion and diversity and our guest today. So welcome. Ooh. Hi. Ooh. You were like the incredible and I was waiting for you to be like the incredible edible egg. And I was gonna just go <laughs> with it. I was really, I was really excited about it. But when I am not incredible, egg. I thought Hulk. <laughs> I am not an egg. I am Christina Ariel. Hi. I don't know if I'm supposed to say words and stuff and things, but I do stuff on the internet and I hang out on the internet. It could be three o'clock in the morning and you'll be like, hey, everyone in the world is asleep. Not me. Let's hang out and talk. Say Actually, awesome. about half the world oh, would be wide I, awake. Well, that's true. You know, Mitch is a real. That's spot. actual and that's factual. <laughs> I'm going to be playing Ramona LaBelle and I am super excited to see what. It's supposed to happen because that's the joy of this is I have no idea what I'm gonna do or what's gonna happen. Thanks for having me. Ramona is a, an avid hiker. She was actually scaling a volcano because skills. And she's just a, a very interesting character. She is a little, um, a ditzy is polite, but yeah, ditzy, she's fun. I don't even know who she is. Let's figure it out. <laughs> The joy of new characters. Right. So for you who are watching live on Twitch, uh, we have audience interaction that you can help impact the game live. Uh, we have voting on um, specific location names or NPC names or whatever prompts, kind of like improv. So you guys will vote on what the thing is, be it a name or a location or just like an idea. And then our DM Mitch will throw it into the story and you'll see kind of what your choices affect uh, the world around us. Uh, you can also give bits for inspiration. If you uh, collectively give 1000 bits for any of these characters, that person earns inspiration, which essentially means that you can roll twice and take the best of two rolls. So we get a do over essentially. If you want to talk about anything related to the show or make any fan art and want us to see it, make sure to keep using that hashtag, hashtag the dungeon club. All fan art that is submitted every week will be having a chance to be in our fan art display. Please continue sending fan art our way. We love to see it and we love interacting with you guys online. So keep using the hashtag, hashtag the Dungeon Club. And I'm going to toss it over to Mitch to tell us what happened last time. Cause... Let's recap. Last time a lot happened. Wolf returned from his uh, uh, stint with Emmeth uh, after eating some poison berries. And he caught back up with the group, but they were promptly ambushed by bandits who they easily dispatched, but not before Wolf's unbreakable power object blade broke. And Artemia learned through the use of her, her power object, the lens, that uh, 
that Wolf wasn't really being true to himself, and therefore his his power object was not uh, as strong as it could be. So uh, they had a very intense heart to heart, and uh, Wolf or Daniel, as he now goes by, and I'm sure we'll try to call him, <laughs> will uh, is uh, is has embraced his nerdy side and has multiclassed into a wizard as well as a fighter. Um, they went to the town of Elmore, where all music and dancing had been banned. They met Anne, uh, a, a local bard, and uh, performed some music and saved the town from a uh, devil who had uh, manipulated them. They defeated him in a loot battle. And uh, Heather got her power object, which was a six-string magical loot. Um, so now that they have all the power objects, they are going to set off on their journey to return home. But uh, Emmeth has some some news for them. So with that, let's hop into episode five, Back to the 80s. Welcome to the Club. Emmeth looks nervously at you. He goes, I haven't been completely honest with you. You aren't from 1980s Earth. You're from here. This is your true home. 100 years ago, you were the greatest champions this realm had ever seen. You had your power objects, the very ones you have now, and you were a team. You brought peace and unity to these lands, but then you fell in a fierce battle to the powerful Kenner. Your power objects were scattered across the land, and Kenner imprisoned you. Rather than killing you, he took delight in creating a demiplane, a, a false reality that was designed to seem normal, but was wrought with suffering, angst, and unfairness. And most importantly, he created a place where your differences would drive you apart rather than bring you together. He found it so amusing to have you close to one another, yet have no idea of the power you once wielded together. But then, in an attempt to save you, my master, Mattel, he entered into your prison realm and posed as what you would call a janitor. He was supposed to get you and come back, but for some reason, you came and he didn't. You need to go back to the 80s using the portal inside Mount Gravis. Find Mattel and figure out how to stop this bleeding of the 80s into our world. I think, based on what you told me, he opened a rift to get you here and it's still open. Does that all make sense? That's real no. heavy, dog. No, it doesn't. I, uh... I know, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't tell you right away, but you weren't ready, you wouldn't have believed me, but I, I hope now I you can see now. the truth. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry. You have no, a I mean, mom and a dad and a dog and an older no, brother it's true. and sister it's who true. He sucks. made it to punish you. Think about it. Have you ever, when you were in the 80s, did you ever give a speech in your underwear or, I don't know, forget every line to a theater performance you were in or have frog legs for hands or only you get blamed for a fight lots of people were in, things like that? Well, okay, yeah, I definitely remember was, that last I mean, part. Yeah, I did, there was yeah. no reason. And I got, I should have only been blamed for that. I mean, yeah, I guess it was uh, kind of weird that I forgot. Artemia, Ar 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 your lens, your lens. Only you oh. can use that. Oh. Anyone else who touches that goes mad. How do you explain that? Well, I kind of honestly can't explain any of the things that we've been through. You're saying I'm like from here? Where's my family? You're speechless. I understand. Yeah, I, I, I just, this is just a lot to take in because, you know, I, know. I, I don't, look, I remember my dad, my, my mom, uh, you know, when I was 12, I, I accidentally stuck a bobby pin in the electrical sockets just to see the sparks. You know, how, how, how did he add all that? Oh, Daniel. What? <laughs> I mean, I feel like it makes sense because I always thought that I belonged to another world and I could never really explain my existence where I was. 
And so this actually makes a lot of sense for me. I kind of feel bad for yeah, the well, rest of you. At least you see the truth. Uh, I mean, it still doesn't make any sense. I don't remember any of it. But you said that none of us remember, so it is what it is. Look, I understand it's shocking, and I, I knew you might not take it well. I mean, Heather stormed out of the room, so she might need some consoling later, but go well, see for I'm yourselves. Like... Mattel is still there. The rift is still open. So go back, see for yourselves that it's true. Close the rift and come back with Mattel so that we can, we can return you to the, the great champions you once were. Okay. okay. All right. We will go do that. Yeah. That's the only okay. thing we can do. All right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so you, uh, he, he leads you outside back to your horses. And he, you, you mount your horses kind of quietly. Um, and you begin to ride off toward Mount Gravas, the volcano that looms over uh, this, this area um, that you can even see from his house. It's got lava flowing down from the top. It billows smoke. Um, and you begin riding. Uh, Heather is very quiet and not really in the mood to talk at the moment, but, you know, maybe eventually she'll open up again. Um, as the, uh, the volcano, as you approach, um, you ride about an hour and the volcano looms larger and larger over you and you begin to head up a mountain path that switchbacks up the volcano and winds its way around. And, um, Eventually, the road comes up and dead ends into a cliff face. The road just goes right into the cliff. There's no, the path doesn't continue. There's no door or anything like that. So you're saying there's no door, there's no path. It's just a dead end. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> uh, what do we do? Do we well, do? there has to be a door here somewhere. There's probably some kind of hidden switch or button or rock that we need to, I don't know, touch a certain number of times or a password. Do you want to roll investigation? Sure mm. thing. Eight. Eight. Uh, you... Look around, but um, you you don't see anything in particular. It just seems kind of, you know, you search some, some nearby brush. You kick some rocks around on the ground looking for like a pressure plate or something on the ground, but you don't find anything. All right, hold on, our, our team. Heather I'm rejoins really the good. company. Okay, guys, I stopped freaking out. Um, <laughs> What's yeah, you, up? you're kind of just moving with your face in stasis that whole time, just in complete shock. It was real weird, but yeah. I wanted to give you your space. You know, I've heard it's called being catatonic, uh, and mm. it can help in extreme situations. Mm. My, I've, I've had it before. I'll probably, maybe, ha I hope, hopefully, I won't have it again. Um, so what's going on? What's now? What? Well, <laughs> what's I'm about up? to check the area, make it make it safe. And then you've uh, uh -huh. you've ridden you you've ridden your horses up the side of Mount Gravis, the volcano, and the the road oh. just dead ends into a cliff face. Yep, okay. and there's no door. Yeah. There is here. Uh, no path, folks. Because people oh, were asking to see our die, they're real curious. Oh. And then also, I learned uh, how to turn on the autofocus on my camera. <laughs> so, well, my focus sucks. Oh, exciting! I you. apologize, and oh, yeah. for my lack of, you know, that's all good. I rolled a dirty on. twenty, a dirty twenty mm -hmm. for uh, for for that investigation check. Cool. Well, if you walk up to the cliff face, and you start, uh, you, you notice there's kind of it's kind of caked in like rubble and dust, and you start wiping away, and and you realize uh, you, as you wipe away, there are uh, there is an inscription that says it's dangerous to go alone 
And you also have, there are three runes. Hmm. That's the inscription. <laughs> wow. That's really and there weird. Are, there are three <laughs> runes, each of them 10 feet apart. And you notice when you were wiping, each time your hand passed over the rune, it would faintly light up a little bit. Hmm. Should we just read it aloud? Yeah, I, I think that's the only way. Are we showing our dice bags too? Oh, I showed mine because <laughs> it says it's you dangerous to go alone right? on it. Mine matches my outfit and my soul. Ooh, oh, that's a cool dice bag. That's a cool one. <laughs> I like that. Person that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> Sorry, to, uh, to recap, you've, there's an inscription above that says it's dangerous to go alone, and then beneath, 10 feet apart on the wall, are three runes. Well, Kelsey knows what, like, the next part of that saying is, but I don't think Heather plays video games. So, <laughs> from Kelsey to the others, whoever feels like they've played this video game, normally the rest of that goes, here, take this, and there's, like, a thing to take. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Mm. Yeah. And it's like weapons. And, and, so oh, it actually, seems that we need to. But Heather does not know that. To... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, just, I don't know if you heard me when I told you, but when you were wiping off, every time your hand would make contact with one of the runes, it would light up. Okay. Yeah. I, here's. I'm gonna... mm. Buckle up, Mitch. Oh. I hold tight onto my grimoire. Mm -hmm. And I stare at the rune. Okay. It's confusing, but I continue to stare really hard. And I think on the words that were just spoken to me. That I am of this world. I'm not from a teen from the 80s. And I almost start to drift forgetting where I am as I focus on this and I try to see and rack my brain as hard as I possibly can to see if this rune is familiar in any way, whether it be from fleeting memory or playing D&D &D at the table uh, back in the 80s. Go ahead and roll Arcana. All right, uh, I'm gonna. S I always like using different D20, so I'm switching to this metal boy right here. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, just for the chat. You know, y'all ask, and I try. And if you know, don't ask it's anything. Here for weird. you. <laughs> mm, see, that's why I don't roll this one. Uh, that's gonna be a ten. <laughs> Put that one Some back away. One. Yeah, yeah, this heavy. Um, Banished. Dice jail. You, yeah, you're, you're not positive, um, but you think that it, it has it signifies something to do with touch. Heather goes up and touches the words because she saw them light up, and she just no the runes light up, not the words. Oh, the runes. So there, there's, measure, runes there's too. and then there's rune, 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 and each one's ten feet apart. There's three? Yeah. Heather touches a rune and tongue. just looks at the other twos and is like, touch the runes! Touch the runes! There's three of us! I will go touch the runes. Lights up as well. Daniel? And then I <laughs> take a deep breath, stare at the rune, close my eyes, and press my fingers and then my palm until my hand, the warmth of my hand, against the room. It lights up. <laughs> Kelsey's Suddenly, excited. Heather the ground begins to rumble happened. and the cliff face fissures up the side and begins to part. And it reveals a narrow stone walkway over a pit of lava. There are lava falls all along the side and this, this bridge just leads straight across into a large cavern deep in the depths of the volcano. I get it now, because it was like dangerous to go alone, but there's like three of us. So we couldn't mm. have gone unless there were three of us. 
<laughs> yep, that is that makes really sense. True. This yeah, is I'm still spooky. worried about the danger uh, part of that. I think the it's danger is hot. still. I'm still apparent, worried about the know. part where he says that we're not from, like that the all of our lives is fake and nothing's real. Uh, well, it's yeah. not that it's fake. It's that the life we thought we had is fake and we don't remember our past life. So everything's Okay, I'll just, you know what? I'll just shove that way down deep inside and deal with that later. Let's go forward. <laughs> That's yep, just starts right. walking into with her little cherry guitar on her back, just bopping in her potato sack. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I deal with yeah. all of my pain and trauma. <laughs> Denial. Let's just go. Let's just go forward. All right. You, you cross the bridge and you begin to sweat as just the, the lava everywhere radiates around. It's this just steamy, humid, hot cavern. And, and you enter, uh, you cross the bridge and you enter a cavernous circular room. And in the middle, there is a large magma pool with chunks of blackened rock floating throughout. The magma begins to bubble and slowly six of the black clumps rise up and take the shape of small humanoids with sharp teeth and claws. Their exterior is hardened igneous shell, and you can see cracks in their body where glowing molten rock flows within. They glare at you silently with toothy, fiery grins. And I need you to roll initiative. Oh my. Well, to roll initiative, look inside my fiery 18. heart. Take 18? my fiery red die. With this Jesse die. Yes, he says. Which means 16. Oh, my Whatever. You get Daniel? <laughs> yeah, 13. Oh, no, 15. No All right. Initiative. So, Heather, kind of uh, running towards you on top of the lava are uh, are six of these, like, little kind of magma demon-looking creatures. What do you want to do? Um, well, she I don't think she is as empathetic to magma creatures, and she's also <laughs> wigging out hard so i think she's gonna go like berserk and like let off her fears and frighten like just energy on this and, and uh she's magically going to manifest a shimmering green acid arrow because this is all of the deep dark bad crap that she's like pushing down in a in a form and she's just gonna throw it towards uh one of the magma monsters um, okay yeah <laughs> go ahead and roll to hit yep um ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba. what do i roll okay well to hit. there he is i found it that is a 25. Woo! roll damage yes i shall Oh my goodness, that's a 13. A 13, all right. <laughs> Hulked out, Heather, is my F. Your acid, your acid arrow flies at this, they're called magmans, by the way. It flies at this little magman, and as it hits, it explodes with an acid splash from within, and the, the creature just kind of explodes into liquid magma and settles back into the pool. Not today! Says, Artemia, <laughs> it's your turn. What do you do? Do these fun little creatures that remind me of my cousins, do they continue to spawn continually? Is there, uh, do we have? You, there's now five. Um, it, it doesn't seem okay. so far like any spawn. And are any of them attacking, trying to attack me directly? Um, they're all kind of charging at you from the middle of this lava pool. So they're still mm. in the, making their way. So you don't know who they're going delicious. for quite yet. Absolutely delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna just try to break their little multi hot bodies with my uh, short sword. Okay, um, so you can actually, you can walk up to the edge of the lava and, and make an attack. Okay. Um, so go ahead and roll to hit. 12. A 12 does not hit. Your blade actually makes contact, but it kind of just gets like absorbed by the, the molten and you yank it back out and like fling off the, the lava before it melts your sword. Okay, so 
Um, up next, we have the Magmans. Two of them, uh, two of them charge straight at Daniel, and they run up and they just kind of are outstretching their hands. And all they're trying to do, it seems, Wolf, is to get their hands, their magma hands, on you. Oh, that's a crit fail. And <laughs> does a uh, a fifteen doesn't hit you, right? No, fifteen does not hit this body. All right, as they charge at you, you you pull back into your wide receiver uh, skills and you, you fake one way. You, you, look, you look left and your body goes right. You <laughs> juke them out and you draw your blade and shield and prepare to attack. Ah, um, yes. One magman is going to head for you, Heather. Another crit fail. <laughs> <laughs> These magmen just don't know what hit them. You, uh... Yeah, he, he's a little uncoordinated, kind of just glooping magma, and you easily just sidestep him. And then Artemia does a 16 hit. Your armor class? Uh, yeah, I have a 15 AC. All right. So uh, two magmans run up to you. You sidestep the first, and then the second one puts his hands right on you, and you can feel just this flame, this burn sear your body. And you take... Seven damage, and you are now uh, your your clothes alight, and you are now on fire. Uh, Daniel, you're up. So you want to light me and my friends on fire, huh? Well, let me strike you down real quick, and I'll cast magic missile. Okay, um, and that how many you get? Three or four? I forgot how many. You're what are you um, casting at? I'm casting at, I think, let me see, hold on. I wish it would have, oh, there it is, ha ha. All right. Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's uh, one uh, one per uh, spell, uh, three, let me see. I believe it's three. Says, it's yes, three darts, and then you cast uh, you cast uh, one more dart for each spell slot above the first. So I'll do um, right. four darts. All right, four darts. Um, go ahead, and uh, it's automatically hits. I forget. Do you roll damage, or is it a set damage with magic uh, missile? Yeah, I roll damage. One d four plus okay. one. Perfect. So prepare. And which which four are you hitting? Um, uh, two on you, two on so, Artemia, one on Heather. Uh, I'll do uh, the. I'll cast them for the two on me and the two on Artemia. Okay, perfect. Go and ahead and roll damage. That, that is going to be four damage. All right, your magic missiles, like heat-seeking missiles, fly and hit these four magmans, and you see chunks of molten rock like fly off of their bodies, leaving little holes that seal back up with flowing magma. Um, but they are now just a little bit smaller, uh, having yeah. removed part of their body. And we go back to Heather. Would you describe Jenny's current predicament as being about the size of a small campfire <laughs> in terms I'm of sorry. fire? I'm sorry, Can I what? Use prestidigitation on Jenny and snuff out the fire that's. Cause she's on fire, right? Still, she is. Yep, I. Am. I have an ability to <laughs> snuff out a small campfire. How it much is fire is it. on her? She just on fire, so you could do that. <laughs> I snuff out the fire on Jenny Amazing. with my prestidigitation. <laughs> I'm saying it very wrong. <laughs> Jenny, as the, as the flames are to climb up, the claims, flames are starting to climb up your your clothing, but then suddenly they just. Poof, blow out like a candle, and you you just have a slight singeing. Um, and that, that's and it, a cantrip, so that doesn't count as a, my thing, right? Um, can you cast it as a bonus action? Yes. Um, then, oh, I don't know. then you, uh, it. I don't think you get. I think that it's still Casting a spell. One action. Yeah. Dang. So that was your move. That was your turn. Okay. Um. I assume you don't want to move. 
you're within uh, melee range, so it'd be an attack opportunity, so you probably don't. Oh, so I can't hide now. Uh, okay, no. Bonus action. Um, it, no one has taken damage yet, right? Um, Artemia has. Did you, oh, yeah. okay. I'll, I'll cast Healing Word on Artemia. Okay. Thank you. You're How much welcome. Help? I'm looking that up. You guys all have inspiration, by the way, just a reminder. Oh, mm -hmm. thank Sick. you. I, I did need that reminder. All right, healing word. Or not healing word. Wait, no, it was healing word. Her, healing word's a bonus action, right? Yes, okay. Cast healing word. I will roll it. And it is... Nine. You get nine healed. I say, I, nice. I turn off the flame and then I go, I go, the healing word today is, you're amazing. And that's the healing word. And it heals you. Okay. Artemia, it's your turn. What do you do? Can I use bonus action disengage? Mm -hmm. And then uh, who is being attacked the most currently? Is it Daniel or is it Hel uh, Heather? You and Daniel each have two, on, so so Daniel is the most attacked right now. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm disengaging and I'm sneak attacking one of the little okay, go ahead demon and roll. children. Okay, got 13. Uh, 13 does not hit. Did you roll with advantage, though? I did not. Okay. So roll again. I got 15. That hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. Eight. Eight damage. All right. So you you run behind one of the magmans and you stab your sword through its back and it kind of lets out like a, a cry with then smoke comes out of its mouth and it uh, kind of rumbles and then explodes in a splash of magma, and I need both you and Daniel to make a dexterity saving throw. 23. Daniel, dexterity saving throw. Oh, shit. Come on, trying to choose which dice. I'm gonna go with the one that says dough if I get a one. Go. Oh. Did you get did you get dough? I most certainly got dough. Oh, <laughs> you, you brought that on yourself, man. I most certainly just rolled this stupidity. Oh no. Alright, Daniel, well you are you are splashed with magma and take eight damage. Um Artemia, oh. you kinda dive out of the way and it just catches your leg a little bit, so you only take four damage. Um but you have dispatched another magman. Ugh. So there's now only four left? Yes. Okay. And then there were four. Oh, I sure did have in, uh, inspiration, but it's all good. I'm saving it for when it counts. <laughs> I'm going to waste them on a little mag magma little baby. Heather. Right, how much damage did I take? Eight. Okay. Heather, the magma still on you kind of reaches up and touches you, dealing only two damage. He just manages to touch your clothes, but your clothes do a light. So you are now on fire. I use my thaumaturge to turn it back off. I bet you don't. Um, Not yet. Artemia, one runs up to you and puts his hands on you, dealing seven damage and lighting you on oh. fire as well. Can we not? And then Wolf... For you, you, you've got your shield out, and you're just like shield bashing away these magmans. They're ah, 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 trying to touch you, just rejecting them with your shield and sword. Uh, we go to Daniel. You're up. You got two friends on fire, and you're surrounded by magmans. Help us! The friends are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> There's magmans. Okay, let me see. Uh, well, spell wise, uh, really can't do much, so I think. I need to start slashing through some of these uh, little dorks. So uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, slice at one of the magma magma babies with my blade. Okay. All right. So that is going to be a 17. Does that hit? That hits. Yep. All go right. ahead and roll damage. You know it. Okay. Let me get one of my baby D8s. I have one right here. Why am I playing games? Five damage. Five damage. You stab your sword right through the mouth of a magma into its kind of fiery inside. And as you do, it goes limp and its whole body just melts off of your sword um, but uh, before kind of poof, exploding in a ball of magma. So make another deck saving throw. Um, as well as you are right. Tinia because you're within five. Okay. I'm not gonna use the dough dice. You are in jail. Uh... Let me see. Let's go with, with black and gold. What you got for me? I got 17. Okay, you succeed. I got uh, eight. Uh, you do not succeed. So you take another. You're in jail too. Uh, you take six damage, um, but only three for you, Artemia. As you, uh, you've seemed to learn that these guys explode when they die, and uh, Daniel is a little carried away with his sword swinging. <laughs> All right, there are three remaining. Heather, you're up. What do you want to do? Um, as a bonus action, can I stop, drop, and roll? <laughs> uh, you, yeah, you take an action to put it out. It would take a full action. Oh, it would take an action put to put it out. out, yes. All right. I'm going to just acid arrow one of them again. Okay. She's going to be like, fire, what fire? And she's going to manifest her anger again and throw it in all of its acidity the glory. All right, at, go ahead and roll the hit. At one of the magmen, and that would be a 21. Woo. Are you doing the one near you or the, the two near, um, near Daniel? I'll do whatever is... Well, I'll do... One that's probably guess closer to me because I don't want it to explode okay. onto Daniel. <laughs> okay, roll the hit. All right. Oh, I did roll the hit. It was 21. Oh, okay, sorry. Roll damage, I mean. Oh, yes. The damage. What's the damage? It's 14. Oh, all right. Um, so you take six damage from being on fire, by the way. Ah. And then I need you to make a deck saving throw as the, once again, like the first arrow, lodges in and explodes in this acid magma cocktail okay okay <laughs> am i gonna make a dexterity saving throw this dexterity saving throw is gonna be just very good and that is 17. <laughs> all right you Yay! succeed oh still not good though uh you take six damage ah <laughs> She does like something flashy, like she tries to do some like a, some kind of like cool uh, dance move where she like spins, um, but then she kind of spins into some of it. <laughs> so. It be your own dance moves. Yeah. If All right, Artemia, sometimes. you're up. There's only two left, and they're on you and Daniel. And I'm still on fire, aren't I? Yes. Great. Love it for me. Um, you can use okay. an action to put it out. I mean, can't really do much if I'm on fire, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> turning into a freaking don't worry. Bit over here. <laughs> no, yeah, don't, don't worry while I'm on fire yeah, and turning get you, get into a... Off, get yourself off fire. Like I have a, an idea. I feel like a lechon asado on Noche Buena right now. This is terrible. Okay, so I'm going to put it out. Just put out the fire. All right. You pop, Lord. drop, and roll. Put out the flames. And then the two remaining magmans, um, they turn and they flee and they run back into the center of the magma pool and they begin to sink in and their eyes glare at you as they return to the lava. Yeah, right, you weirdo. better run. Oh, I wanted to charm one of them, make it a pet. All right. I'll see okay, you. Okay, Daniel. Next magman we run into, Daniel, you can charm and make a pet. Yeah, I'm looking for some pets. My dad wouldn't okay. let me get a cat. We'll get you um, a pet. 
Okay, well that um, was something. <laughs> yep. Uh, I it like can a I barbecue up in here. Since we're out of he there, can I heal everybody? Uh, yes, you can. Good luck. Okay, I cast heal me. I cast healing word on um Artemia and Daniel. Okay. Yeah. So healing word for for Artemia is fifteen for Artemia. Nice. And that's eleven for Daniel. Cool. Yeah. So you heal them up. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I don't want to. No, I ran out of slots, I think. So wait, okay. no, I can still do it again for me. <laughs> Just burning all my <laughs> slots right now. She's gonna probably like take a nap in a minute. And I'm healing myself 11. I guess it's kind of pointless then to heal and then and assume I'll take a nap, but here we are. <laughs> cool. Okay. So you enter, you heal up and you enter the next room, which opens up into a gargantuan cavernous space, hundreds of feet tall and wide with many lava falls and narrow pathways, all teeming with monsters leading up to a central platform high above. You can tell it's going to be a very long, treacherous journey to the top. You then begin to sense the 80s is melding into the story structure, and my storytelling begins to get lazy. <laughs> it's time for a montage! Montage stuff. Hero soldier on fighting lots of monsters. Look how mighty they've become. Spells fly all directions and distract for a sneak attack. If you ever need some heroes, these three have got show back. They're Woo! strong now. Oh, so mighty. Fights take too long. Ledges. Over bubbling lava pits, punching fire elementals, even though it doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. They're strong now. Oh, so strong. Oh, so mighty. Mighty, mighty. Fights take too long. Way too long. So just trust me. Turn based combat. Trust me. Oh, trust During that montage, could um, Heather sleep and take a short rest? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tired and sweaty, you finally arrive at the central platform. And there, in the center, is a huge doorway with swirling pink light filling the frame. It's the portal. And then a few feet from it, you also notice the remnants of a one-person camp and boot prints in the dirt that lead up to the portal. Someone went through the portal? I think someone's in the 80s that shouldn't be there. Well, I uh, think we have to go in there. Yep, yeah, you got it right. Well, yeah, I mean, we have to go save the janitor. Can yeah, I do? Can tunnel. I inspect the campsite just to see if it was the janitor's campsite or if it was someone else additional? Um, yeah, go ahead and roll uh, investigation. Okay, dokie. Investigation. It's the Heather Investigatory Show. Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, you look at it. It, it seems uh, that the. The boot prints, as well as kind of the remnants of the camp, are fairly recent. Um, recent. Yeah. There's someone else out there. All right. Well, I guess we should just go, right? Let's go. Yeah. Back to the '80s. Yep. This Back is to the '80s. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Should be the. Mm. Title of film, maybe, or similar. I look back at towards uh, Kit and I say, where we're going, we don't need horses. 
and I step through. Well, I, I look back at my My Little Pony and I go, where I'm going, I definitely would need a horse, but I think you're better here. And I really appreciate you and all of the work that you put through. Okay, I love you. Bye. And she like, I guess I have up. to do the same. <laughs> I turn to, turn to Pongo and I say, where I'm going, there's going to be a dope Disney film with a character named after you. Aww, that's, that's it. Nice. That's <laughs> I should have cast speak to animals and made you speak to me again. Oh, I mean, I'm you, in the uh, 80s. Out of spell. Right. You stepped into <laughs> the, this portal. And as soon as you step through the threshold, you find yourselves floating. In every direction, you can see the astral plane. And faint music seems to be coming from nowhere in particular as you float past endless celestial bodies. You feel relaxed and rejuvenated, and your wounds and burns heal completely. And Heather, your spell slots are restored. Yeah. <laughs> as you float, your power objects liquefy and morph. The spell book into your basic coding book, the lens into your camera, and your loot into your dad's guitar he keeps in the basement. Um, it also uh, is now within a gig bag, so you can carry it on your shoulders without having a random guitar in your hand at all times. Okay. Um, and, and just as a reminder from last episode, you're already in a, the 80s clothing um, from yes. when the song transformed everything. Eventually, you feel yourselves being set down. And in a blink, you're in the back seat of a red Ferrari 250 GT California convertible in the middle of a parade in downtown Chicago. Is this the driver, a Ferris Bueller reference? The driver turns around and goes, oh, not again, get out, get out. Dude, In the middle okay. of a parade, just jump out of Wait, this how, car. Where am I supposed to okay. go? Dude. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Get out. What's with people all just right, hopping right, in my car? Right. Just... Wait, did someone hop in your car? Who would? It... What did they look like? What were they like? I don't know. Some, probably part of a He-Man float or something. She was dressed all weird. Now get out of my she car! Was dressed. Okay. Okay. Oh, get sure. out. Getting oh. out. I I get out of the As... car because this cool. is awkward. <laughs> Heather does like you, a fun little like flip out of the car. Uh, yeah, As you hop out of the car, uh, you notice a dusty boot print on the trunk. Hmm. Hmm. Is it going out or in? It's going back, like back further in the parade. Okay. Yeah. It looks like whoever- well, I'm gonna follow those out... prints. Yeah, it looks like whoever got out of the car and the portal probably went this way. So let's start looking for someone that doesn't fit into the 80s. All right, yeah. well, as you, as you say that, you look up and uh, on the Ninja Turtles float behind you, you see a woman in adventurer's clothing. She looks confused and panicked. Uh, and there are teenage parade volunteers uh, in yellow polos yelling up at her and they're going, get off of there, get off of there. Stop in the name of the... The hiding you do, get get off of that. And this, uh, she doesn't listen to them, and she seems confused and, and panicked. Ah! Oh, okay. uh oh. Okay. Oh, I think okay. we found her. <laughs> yeah, He's definitely uh, not from the eighties. It is a parent. Hey. Yeah. Whose hey. creature is this? Uh, what hey, I um, like. I, I run up to the front of the float and I'm like, hey, hey, we're from- As you, as you approach, uh... she, as you approach, she looks at you and then bolts off further down. She, she starts chasing and hopping up on other floats. Roll initiative. Oh man. <laughs> All right, I got a seven. 17. My good rolls had to run out at some point. <laughs> 15. Who got 15? Wait, this sounds oddly <laughs> like the song in Ferris Bueller. Daniel? I got uh, nine. 
he's going to jail. All right, so she hops off uh, of the float and begins running back further through the parade. Um, Artemia, you are first. As you kind of, as you all are hopping up onto the Ninja Turtles floats, the Ninja Turtles the, in costume with their weapons all kind of turn and mock, mock, like, to fight you. What do you do? Oh, no. Oh, not, not Donatello and Michelangelo and Neil Leonor. Um, what do I do? Well, these their weapons they're carrying are not real, so uh, no. they, tr- te- just they do not pose a threat to me no. per se. Uh, but uh, um, can I like jump ahead and I, cast I want something? to be able to dodge them. Um, yeah, so roll roll a dexterity for me or Heather. You. Rolling dexterity. 22. All right, so you actually, you run and you slide right between Raphael's legs, straight under, and you continue chasing this interloper through the floats. I'm like, cowabunga, Uh, and I keep (laughs) going. Ramona, you are up. You're now running and you're climbing up onto a Transformers uh, float with a bunch of, uh, they're not humans, they're just like, kind of transformer statues or builds. Can you make a, a deck save for me? That is a dirty 20. Dirty 20? Mm. All right. As you uh as you are running through the float uh with their with their guns the transformers boof, 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 shoot off confetti cannons and you manage to uh to dive your way forward and avoid getting blasted with these huge streams of confetti and continue to dash. Uh, Daniel, you're up. You've got these Ninja Turtles in the way, man. What are you doing? I am going to, uh, <laughs> I'm going to just hit one with an unarmed strike and a look with a karate chop. Gotcha. Okay, go ahead and. Uh, <laughs> and I rolled roll a hit. 24 to hit. Okay. Are you, uh, how hard are you hitting, man? I, I'm What's just trying to do like a, huh? What's, well, yeah, go well, ahead. Like, it's, uh, apparently it does just a uh, flat five bludgeoning, but I'm just trying to do like a mock hit, like just like a boo, like as if I'm playing along, but enough to knock them on their butt. Okay, cool. Five would kill a person, so <laughs> we'll, uh, a regular person. <laughs> so you got to mock, you just knock them in and jokingly the, the Ninja Turtle, he, you know, falls down, um, and you just hop over him and continue running. Heather, okay. what do you want to do? Um, I think I'm gonna try to like do a performance where I look like April O'Neil, and I like, cause I'm like, so she's gonna be like, you Ninja Turtles always getting into trouble when the real danger is out there. Like, let me through. <laughs> She's going to try to, like, perform her way through. <laughs> okay, roll performance. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's a 23. <laughs> all right. All the, uh, all the Ninja Turtles uh, in costume, they grab their heads and go, <laughs> and they, you know, gesture part and gesture you through. And she like Four runs. She's dots. like, "Hey, bro, let me out!" <laughs> she keeps running. <laughs> uh, Artemia, you're up. You're now on the. Uh, she's still running through the Transformers float, and you're climbing up on now. Um, give me a Dex save um, to start. Twelve. Twelve. Oh, as you're running, poof, the cannons go off again, and one just hits goes right into your chest and knocks you prone um so you were you were close on ramona's tail but now you got knocked down and she's continuing to run so the gap is growing um and then uh ramona you're up you hop off the transformers float and you're climbing up onto the next one um it's uh you don't really know what it is but there's some guys in with like big packs on their back and in like khaki jumpsuits and there's a big like marshmallow man in the way. Um, oh, I can't hear you. Uh, if you're talking, I can't hear you. Oh, that's because I didn't say nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't say- 
<laughs> but what I would like to do is go straight for the marshmallow man, and okay. I would like to push him. Okay. Go ahead and roll uh, strength for me. So 14 minus one, that's a 13. All right, you walk up and you, you walk to this marshmallow man and you oof, push him. And it's actually, he's a lot harder to move than you anticipated. And most of your strength kind of goes into, like it just pushes in his, his stomach portion. Um, so you don't knock him over, but you manage to kind of <laughs> squeeze your body in and work your way around and to the far side of the, uh, of the marshmallow man. And then Would Daniel. Adversary. <laughs> Daniel, you're up. All um, right. You're still, I think you're still back on the uh, Transformers float. Yes, so start with a deck save. Yeah. All right, let me go with this again. Deck save. Oh, that is a nat 20. Oh, so you run, you hop up, and you, these cannons fire, you dodge them, you actually hop over Artemia, who is on the ground, and continue running after Ramona. Um, and you're you're gaining on her now. Um, in fact, you've actually you've you've caught up. You're so you're now at the other side of of the marsh. She's on one side of the marshmallow man, and you're on the other. Um, can I get a, a strength uh, saving throw or a strength roll from each of you? All right. <laughs> All right. She has switch dice after that net twenty. That's going to be a uh, sixteen. Did you get a net twenty? Or what'd you get? 16? No, I got a 16 oh. minus one, so it's 15. Oh, 15, 16. So, <laughs> so pretty dang close. So, uh, Daniel, you, you get up and, and you kind of see, as you try to go to one side, you know, she she goes the other. So you, you each at the same time have the thought to push the Marshmallow Man. So you each start pushing. And as you do, the Marshmallow Man is just flailing around, um, but eventually you kind of push it up and, and Ramona falls back off of the, the trailer and loses some ground. She kind of scrambles up to her feet and slowly continues trying to, to run. Um, Heather, you're up. You start with the deck save on the transformer float for me. Can't hear you. Uh, of course I shall. That's an 11. I mean, oh. <laughs> you run through, you hop over our team, and as you are, goosh, the cannons go off again, and you just get hit in midair and just get like <laughs> tabletop to the ground. Oh no! Poor Heather. Okay, well, she tries to like, um, I guess, like r roll out of it and like get back up and then like sprint. Okay, cool. Um, Artemia, you're on the ground as well. I assume you want to stand up and keep running. I, uh, yep, you are correct. This is pathetic, All right. and I do not like this look on me. Perfect. No, the uh, the Ghostbusters, uh, the Ghostbusters have all hopped off of the float and are helping this marshmallow man who fell off the side get up. So it's a clear <laughs> shot as you run over. Um, you catch up, and then, but now as you hop off, there aren't any more floats. Um, but Ramona, as you run, you're now there's a big marching band who is is playing and you, you're trying to weave your way through. They're, they're moving around a lot. It's quite, they're tightly packed. It's very difficult to get through. Can you roll athletics for me? All these bards are just in the way. 16. 16, all right. Um, and then uh, Wolf, can you roll athletics for me as well? My people. Athletics roll, Daniel. Being slow. Okay. My bad. Let me see. This is bot. Ooh. That's going to be ooh, nineteen. Nineteen. All right. So you managed to. Uh, must be your football skills. You managed to weave through this marching band much more effectively, and you actually catch up to this interloper who you've been chasing. Um, and, and as you, you catch up and you kind of get your hand on her, suddenly uh, in the float behind the marching band, um, 
there is a kid, like a teenage kid, who is singing a popular oldies song um, that the band is playing along to. And suddenly everyone in the parade gets in the street and begins dancing along um, to the song. So now all of a sudden you're all sandwiched in as this, you don't recognize me, probably goes to a different high school, but you don't think that teen should probably be on that float, but no one seems to care at all. And they're just dancing in the street, having a great time. Um, but Daniel, you now, uh, you now are right next to this stranger from the fantasy realm. Um, and, and she's realized she's got nowhere to go either. So what do you, what do you do? I just look at them and just go, hey, we're just trying to help you get to what you're getting to unless you're getting to something evil right now. So who are you? Hey. Hey. By this time, have Heather and Artemia like joined the group? Yeah, you guys. I mean, you can you push your way up, but you realize you're getting bounced around, and there's a lot of noise. Um, so you're not really able to have effect effectively have a conversation in the middle of this parade. Heather like dances up, and she's like, "Hey, we came from the same place you are. You want to get out of here and discuss why we're both here?" I just really want yeah. to get away from all these people. So. Because Heather, Heather to like stop. starts a, a party train, <laughs> and so she like grabs our TV and like puts her hands on her shoulders, and she just like dances her way out of the, of the crowd. Um, before I go anywhere with y'all, I need to know what's going on, and I'd like to use my primeval awareness to see exactly if there's like, are they bad? Are they good? I just I can't go with anybody that just wants me to go with them because. I don't, all these people, well, I don't know. I don't know what y'all, <laughs> but I'd like to use my primeval awareness to figure out if there's any evil magic in the area. Okay, sounds good. Um, with with primeval awareness, is there is it like an aura thing or is it just a sense? I forget what the exact, how that manifests or, you know, um, expresses its, itself. Uh, it just takes an action in the spell slot and I can check anything within one mile. Okay, so I think you just sense, so you, you, you use your primeval awareness and um, it's kind of like sensory overload. You actually, um, not only do you get the sense that, uh, that there is no evil around, um, the three of them emanate this feeling of just intense goodness. Um, you, you've never had it be so strong um, never had anything seem so intensely good to you. All right, I'm going to come with you. Okay, they boogie train to the to right. a quiet area right. of Chicago. I'm not right. boogie train to nowhere. I'm walking. Okay, <laughs> Heather and our team are boogie train. <laughs> okay, well, I drag Heather my boogie feet trains. while... It holding on to make to everybody Heather. join her. Yeah. Uh, Heather's mm. a one-woman boogie train to a quiet oh, area. I just All right, you make, boogie. You, uh, you boogie train your way, or at least Heather boogie trains her way, um, off of the street, and you kind of, you get on the sidewalk, and you walk, kind of, uh, you, you turn off of the road where the parade is, and you now just stand on a street corner that is not overflowing with people. Hi, I'm Heather Banks. I'm from, I guess, your world. And we went through this portal and now we're trying to find someone. Um, but we noticed that you're here and I'm kind of curious what you're doing here. Are you here on accident? Or do you have a quest? Or what's what's your deal? I didn't expect to run into anyone here. Who sent you? Huh? Nobody sent me. See, I was out and I decided I like to go and climb. So I went to go climb and I was on Mount Gravis. I just like to go because sometimes it's just real fun and it's real easy. But I was going and then I saw this cavern and I went in and I saw this light and I thought that's real pretty. 
and sometimes you know when you see something that's real pretty and you want to go up to it and you're like you don't really realize that it's going to take you to wherever this is but that's how i got here and hi my name is ramona labelle and it's real nice to meet y'all now that i know you're not evil it's very nice to meet you and know that you too are not evil. And like Heather sense. reaches out her hand to shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she realizes she's not getting a handshake, so she she just like she just like turns it into a thumbs up, and then just like puts it back down. <laughs> yeah. huh. I mean, you I... look just as confused as we are, so. I empathize. So we're trying to track down somebody that put us through that portal. It seems like you might be good at picking up vibes. Do you have oh, any? Oh yeah, I can find people. Okay. <gasps> That's yeah. perfect. We're okay. looking to find someone. He uh, is not from this world. I don't know if there's any other do you guys think of anything but, that like should we just well, try to go back to the school i mean that's exactly where i would go he that's where okay I, I this whole time i thought he was just our janitor <laughs> yeah yeah okay so well maybe we'll start at going to school and then yeah. we'll start searching from there sure yeah as a uh, as ramona You'll see this all the time. Uh, well, it's not always this wild. No, what am I kidding? It's the 80s. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like this. Um, but now, you it's know, I don't. Colors. Yes, you can say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I well, searing colors. Maybe we should look for the bus stop and take the bus back i wonder if that do we have 80s money i like look in my bag all you have is, have all you have money. is that that magical coin purse um i and you also I, realize that okay as uh as ramon is walking around she's drawing a lot of attention from from passers-by um oh, and, and you think it might be a good idea to to maybe get her a change of of clothes uh maybe at the mall yeah, we're yeah gonna I think to we're going to have to be a little more low-key. <gasps> Let's go shopping. Hey. Yay! Can I, can, I ask you, can, I, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's a bus? Ah. Uh. Uh. It's like a big yeah. transport that transports multiple people across distances. To your to where it's you like want to go. Like a robot horse. Like a robot. Or like a carriage. cart. A robot, yeah, ca yeah cart carriage it, kind of thing. I feel like we'd have mm -hmm. to explain what a robot is too. So Whoops, sorry, yeah, Google. you're absolutely yeah, right. It's it like is... a it's like a large. Metal... It's like a carriage that moves itself, like Ooh. magic with wheels, and they move yeah. forward. Yeah, right. and it's big. And you're yeah. not driving it. Someone else drives it. And you, you tell yeah. them where you want to go and they take you there. Yeah. I, you're freaked out, I, aren't you? I, I completely understand everything that you just said. Good. Okay. okay. Well, you, you got that magical well, coin purse. I think we're going to be able to catch a ride to the mall. Yeah, I well, think we, don't know we need to get something for you to blend in a little yeah. more. Also, you're, remember, you're also in downtown Chicago, um, so there, there are oh, also so there's taxis. Also walking distance as well. Or taxis. Um, well, okay, you, well, taxis you guys, the mall, the mall, where your high school and mall and such are in the suburbs. Um, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna take a transportation, you just a suggestion, you might wanna <laughs> head in that direction. You didn't like my bus idea? No, you can take a bus. We It'll can take, take the a lot L? longer. The L does not right. go to your suburb. Ah, all right, fair enough. Um, 
you know what? Let's take a taxi. And Heather like oh. sticks out her hand. <laughs> and uh, after a while, uh, a taxi stops, uh, and you hop into the cab. Who hops in the front seat? Uh, I um, do because I get motion sickness. Okay, perfect. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Up in the front seat, and the cab. You get in the cab. He kind of makes her mic turn on and goes, "Hi, oh, you in the parade?" And he points at Ramona. Uh, yes, she was. Awesome. Well, where are you headed? To the mall in the suburbs, the suburb mall. Oh, I know exactly the place. I know exactly how to get there. Say no more. And he peels off and starts heading back to, uh, to your neck of the woods in suburban Chicago. Uh, and as you travel, uh, it'll take a little bit. So we should take a quick break while you drive. Um, and maybe Artemia can answer some questions for the lovely people in the chat. Hey, everybody. How's everyone doing today? I'm here to answer questions, I guess. Pickle and peanut butter sandwich, yay or nay? Nay? <laughs> now I miss my horse, Pongo. But I like pickles. I like pickles, but the combo is kind of gross. You accepted the news of not being from the 80s really well. Do you really believe that? I don't know. I guess you could say I'm kind of a spiritual person, and I'm not surprised by anything that this universe throws at me, and... I always felt like I didn't really belong in my current era and in my current life, so I don't know. I kind of like the fact that I'm not from the 80s or from this realm or whatever you want to call it. Artemia, what did you do with those eyeballs? I have them in my little, I have a little sack. <laughs> They've kept up pretty well, actually. I got these uh, jars and I kind of have them preserved wood. I think they'll come in handy at some point. No, I'm not planning on eating them. In that case, what are you most looking forward to about returning to your world? My world as in my fake reality, which is the 80s? Or the reality that I'm actually a part of that I forgot all about, which sucks? <laughs> uh... If it's the old reality, I kind of like starting from scratch. I like that idea. If it's my new reality, um, I really like potato chips. So I'm looking forward to eating a lot of potato chips. Like a lot. Oh, well, that's the bell. Hope you guys got to know me a little better. And I promise you, I'll do some good with those eyeballs. Welcome back. Did everyone have a good break? Or rather, yeah, a good yes. cab ride. <laughs> Had a great cab ride. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little bumpy. Yeah, we stopped by, we stopped by, you know, our local spot. Got a quick bite. Got a quick dog. From Manti Brothers? Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I wish you would have asked me if I wanted something, Daniel. <laughs> I'm hungry I'm too. <laughs> Dan Daniel and the cabbie are just eating hot dogs while you sit. In the <laughs> yeah, you know this. Yeah, the Cubs, they're doing it's great. It's a good call. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. And he pulls up to the mall that they just built a couple years ago. It's still brand new. Um, and he goes, that'll be a 43.50. Heather reaches into the bag and pulls out money and hands it to him. <laughs> Is this, is this real gold? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Indeed it is. Oh my. Who you all Thank you. Name? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. How much is, <laughs> thank you, thank you. have a good day. You have a good day, sir. And wait, as he peels off, just... you hear him like crank music. And, like, <laughs> pop we out. just made that guy's day. <laughs> okay, so clearly that doesn't give us, um, this world's money. Uh, do you think we're going to draw a lot of attention if we're just paying everybody in gold? Ooh, good question. What's wrong with gold? Mm, well, it's not really the currency of a choice our time. in this, this day land. and age. It'll make us stick out, kind of like our clothes. 
Hmm. Hmm. I mean, what do y'all? I mean, this is my nice climbing outfit, so I don't know what. They well, don't worry. Me. We will. Uh... It looks. It looks really nice, but um, the people here aren't used to people from different areas. They're used to everybody looking like them, and we want to make sure that you're safe and blend in. You know, like yeah. an undercover mission. Yeah. Ooh, you're so good at this, Heather. What? I said you're so good at this. Well, thanks. I've been trying a new thing. I'm feeling a little more confident. I really appreciate it. Oh, all right. Is it because you were flirting? What? No. Don't. <laughs> Stop. Oh, <God. laughs> like blush and be red. <laughs> she was like, we <laughs> <"What's> it? <laughs> but she still has the the ja like the coat on. Even though she's wearing 80 stuff, she still has the coat on. <laughs> um, our, I just want to, our teammate just wants to get over this because she cannot stand them all. So she would <laughs> like to go in and, and How are we just, gonna figure uh, out this, this, uh, this money thing though. Oh, I, well, I mean, he took it. So they can pawn it and t t trade it or I something. It, it's like a mall. Could you imagine going up to like, I don't know, a normal store, like the neon mullet and just like trying to give them gold. They're going to look at you strange. Like we know the people I that would... work here. Well, this is why I think I'm from another time because I would think that is the <sighs> coolest thing ever. But uh, I mean, where in this suburban part of Chicago are we going to find a gold exchange we look around to see if there's a gold exchange store. Um, you're currently just standing the outside the mall. So would you like to walk into the mall? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <Can> you, uh, <laughs> Let's just brave it out. See what happens. Take some chances. You walk, uh, you walk under the neon uh, archway and open the doors to the mall. It is the huge, expansive, brand new mall with water features and you know, greenery and ferns everywhere. All the signs are neon. And uh, you, you look around and you see a Sears, a Walden Books, Scoops Ahoy Ice Cream Parlor, a Jeweler, uh, The Gap, and the hottest new teen clothing store, The Neon Mullet. So definitely not like a gold exchange place. Negatory. Hmm. Okay. Y'all, this is a lot of stuff. It is, isn't it? It's it's a lot. They just upgraded I their mean, marketplace. Don't you think an edgy place would take gold? Like they'd think that's like, yeah, gold. Who needs this tree killing stuff? I just yeah, I, don't know. I, guess, I mean, whatever. I guess if this whole place is fake, it doesn't even matter, right? Are these people even real? I don't know anymore. <laughs> like I might just be a hologram <laughs> at this point. I have no idea. Just... Whatever. Let's just go for it. She like walks into the neon bullet. Okay. <laughs> so you walk in and it is, it, is the, it is the trendiest clothing store. It is all the rage. Teenagers love it. It has every cool, hip, 80s style under the sun. So whatever you're looking for, they probably got it. Does anything look good to you, Ramona? Anything you might want to wear? Uh, I like how those those tops are slanted. Great. I want one of those. Perfect. Um, Heather walks over and picks like kind of eyeballs to try to find like the right size and like hands it over to her. She's like, All okay, right, we just need the pants, I think, off. now. Yeah. What's, what's like the, is there like a color or pattern or anything to it? It's a gray off the shoulder slouchy sweater. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Perfect. she also goes over and sees a scrunchie. And she picks it up. And she's like, "This is a tiny little archery bow." Uh, 
it, I guess it could be, but here they put it in their hair as like an accessory. She puts it on like and... a ribbon or something. <sighs> oh my god! I, I saw look that, rad. that picture, that that thing. It's like she's got the ponytail on on the side. Yeah, I like the hair off look... the side. It's like totally rad. Oh, this is so fun. Okay, we just need pants now, <laughs> or like bottoms. Do you like like being movementy? Do you want some like leggings? Like um like uh Oh my gosh, what's the like word for it? Like they go on your legs. I'm not that dumb. Yeah, the stretch yeah, the stretchy pants that go on your leg. I'm not saying that you're dumb. I just didn't know how to explain what leggings were. <laughs> I'm the dumb one in this scenario. <laughs> Fine. I'll take those, what, what about these shiny things? These like, these, they look like my sweater. And she grabs some leg warmers. Oh yeah, go for it. Those go on your ankles. On the bottom of your legs. Right. Okay. I guess. And so we, we put together this ensemble and we have okay. Ramona change. Okay, she goes and she changes in, and um, I know it's it's probably really hard to picture what she looks like, but her ponytail's <laughs> on the side. She's got like a gray off the shoulder sweater. I know it's really hard to imagine, but just try your hardest. If only we had a visual. <laughs> um, only. But it looks great. Okay, and then she goes to the makeup stand and gets the blue eyeshadow. <laughs> <That's> the <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> What a um, transformation. You look great. You like it? I love it. I feel, I feel And nice. while that's it's... going on, I, since, you know, cell phones aren't a thing, I need to look busy to avoid anyone coming into contact with me because I am not for talking to random strangers. So I take out my camera and I start taking photos of things. Of uh, Like, what are you taking photos of? Ah, uh, my surroundings, things that interest me in the mall, things that I think would be unappreciated, actually. Okay, so just like object, like architecture and objects and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, you do that, and it you walk around taking photos. It, it uh, even though you know it, it was it was your lens transformed, it operates just like your regular camera. Yeah, and I'm just thumbing through my grimoire, just trying to expand my brain. Heather mm -hmm. pays with gold. Yeah, it, on and the like, outside, it looks like your basic coding book, but on the inside, it's still your spells. Okay, go ahead, Heather. Heather tries. To, uh, Heather goes up to the counter and, and tries to pay with gold. Hey, thanks for shopping at the Neon Mullet. I, it's going to be 107.53. Yikes. And she like, puts down a stack of gold. What is that? It's money. It's real gold. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think I can take take that. I. Is. I'd have to ask my manager. No. Okay. I can wait. Okay. Give me a sec. He turns around and he walks back into the back. <laughs> and uh, about two minutes later, he comes out. He goes. My manager's on lunch, but um, she said that you should just exchange the gold at the jeweler for cash. I, I uh, overhear this, and I come up to, uh, I try and come up to the cashier to convince him, be like, hey, look, we're not trying to give away all this gold that we found, mostly because this gold is owned by some mobsters. See, we went down into a cave and we found a pirate ship. And inside that pirate ship, there was gold and some weird looking dude, but we left him there. Uh, I'm gonna and, stop and you right there. I'm gonna stop you right there. I love the Goonies. <laughs> J just take it. <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna leave this for My you. Favorite movie. Okay? 
feathers shook, but she like takes out another like another amount of uh, gold and puts it on top. She'd be like, "That's for you," and she just scoots back and she's like, Thanks. "Let's go, Ramona." <laughs> cool. There you go. Um, <laughs> you turn around and you walk out of the store, and as you do, you uh, accidentally bump into someone, and she goes, "Watch it, bozo." And you turn around. And goes, Wait a minute. Heather? And what is it, Artemis? Artemis? Heather? Uh, you turn, it's Darla? Darla? And, her, and she's with her friend Heather Tiffany, knew. who's also on the cheerleading squad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so good to see I, you. I, I tuck away. I, <laughs> I can't. Roll, oh, roll, uh, roll stealth. Roll stealth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling stealth. I'm out of here. Let's see. All right, roll tuck stealth. Away. I'm going to roll stealth, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. What you got? Uh, I it I it's a uh, twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah, I rolled a nineteen. <laughs> I rolled a twenty. God damn! <laughs> All right, you uh you uh, as as you round you see her as you round the corner and you duck back into the the neon mullet and you just kind of start browsing through some clothes. She's, Darling, if you, what are you two doing here? I've never seen you here. Are you guys still uh, okay after I, ruining uh, the play last uh, the other day? Uh, yeah, Heather's giving better. me a makeover. <laughs> You're shopping. Yeah, you be, yeah, I bet you better so be fun. shopping. Your clothes are burned. Why are your clothes burned? It is the latest fashion. Haven't you heard of it, Darla? Yeah, you must be pretty behind, Darla. Uh, wow, that's First of all, I know fashion, and no, that's not fashion. Whatever your mom wears isn't considered fashion. Sigmar, Sigmar. Uh, my mom is very well dressed and like I'm sure. Super cool. Not unlike your mom, so I mean I agree. My mom sucks. <laughs> Good, so we agree. Your mom sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does. Okay, Excuse well, me. it's been really great talk. Sorry, does she? <laughs> Heather turns. Do you go to Hall Winter High? I don't recognize you. Whatever that means, I just know that you should not go around insulting people's mothers. Yeah, oh, well, I can nice. insult my own. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, I'll take note so of that. Pretty, Thank you. Could have raised you better, Darla. And and then Heather grabs the two girls and turns and like bolts. In the All right. Other direction. You walk past, and she uh, she turns. Her and Tiffany turn, and they walk into the uh, the neon mullet. Oh no! Whoops! That was a bad choice. Well. Wolf? Hey, uh, hey! What are you doing? Hey, hey, babe! What are you doing here? Why didn't you? Well, I was hanging. Tell me. I was hanging with. I was hanging with Heather and Artemia. <laughs> okay, sure. Oh. Why are you laughing? I, I, I didn't. Wait. Tell a joke. You, are you serious? Yeah. What are you doing with those losers? I wouldn't call them losers, babe. Uh, they're pretty cool. Why are you talking mine. like a computer dork? What's up with your voice? Because this is what I sound like. This is what I no, sound like. Okay, uh, it's no not. Way. Is this a joke? <laughs> yes, what is going is. on? Look, okay, look, so stop. look. What do you want, Darla? What do you want out of life? Where do you see yourself in um, five years? Five years, being the yeah. most popular, hottest senior in college. Mm, and you can't see that that's all bull crap? Um, like, what are you going to get out of life me, being the hottest, coolest senior in college? Um, whatever I want, just like right now. I'm, no, it doesn't kind of work that way. At a certain point, it means that if we're dating, you're going to be dependent on me. And if I'm going to have someone depending on me, I kind of want someone who treats other human beings with respect. Because I'm trying to make the world better, and you're just trying to stand on top of people. 
I guess what I'm trying to say, Darla. Yep. 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 I'm breaking up with you. Especially because you're not even real. But I don't I don't have what? time to explain what? that. Well, yeah, I, I don't have time to explain that, but uh Excuse you just, just, ex No, you're you're breaking Yeah. I don't even know which one to address. You mm. have you lost your mind? The past few days you have been really weird. Do you need to see like few a days... doctor? What is going on? Our team is Look, totally I, I listening know... in on this because she's a low key chismosa. <laughs> I I don't know. I just, this past few days, I've never felt more like me than I've ever felt, uh, you know? And I, as I look inward and see the things I want, don't want to be a football player, I want to be an engineer. Uh, and the people I want to be with aren't shallow, mean people. They're people who, who stand up for what's right always have an eye for good things and you know Tiffany her friend Tiffany goes, Artemia her <laughs> Tiffany, uh, <laughs> Tiffany her friend starts to go listen Wolf you know and, and uh, Darla just looks over at her and she just immediately stops talking and straightens up she goes well you know what that's fine it's good because I don't want to be with a loser who's lost his mind and you know what you're gonna regret this and she splashes her lemonade on you and she runs off with tiffany and you see her just go into another shop i should have been a little less mean but i don't know it really made me mad how mean she was to y'all Heather like walks back as apparently she has been next to our TV this whole time. She's like, it's okay. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, actually I feel good. It feels like a huge weight because you know that like I'm beyond the wolf, you know, side of me. And that was kind of the one part of me that was still stuck there, even though it may not even be, be real. So, uh, were y'all able to get some new clothes? Yeah, yeah, we were. Ramona looks great. Mm, that you do. Okay. Uh, so are we going to search for the janitor at school, or what's the plan uh, here? Art, so, Artemi, you're, you're taking pictures again. Are you, what are you I taking am. pictures of? Just people, mannequins, horrible outfits, uh, water fountains that make no sense in the middle of a mall. And just, uh, Perfect. you so, know, your camera, you know, your, your camera operates as normal, but then, you know, you, there's a, a couple holding hands, walking alone through the mall and you go to take a snap, a candid picture. And you realize as you look through the viewfinder, there is just this ever so slight, like faint red outline that kind of like radiates from them. And when you snap the picture, those lines amplify and they get humongous. And you see the couple uh, out of nowhere start to freak out and they look up toward the sky and they point up at nothing. There's nothing there. And they scream and they turn and they run the other way out of the mall. Uh, Y'all, I just uh, think I saw something through my lens. Um, there's that, that couple, that couple that you just saw right up, right up ahead. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. ran out. It's real weird. Y uh, yeah, we should, uh, chase them. Or, you know, not be too obvious, but we should follow them, like, right now. So, they went that way. <laughs> so we start... Just believe me, something weird happened okay, in yeah. that lens as I was taking a photo and they started emanating red stuff and I think that's a sign and I think we should follow them because nothing surprises me anymore and this lens tells me things. So, let's go! Okay, super weird. Yeah, whatever you say. Alright, so and... you uh, you run out, you, you kind of run outside, but by the time you, you are outside the mall, 
Um, you see them hop in their car and peel out and and get away. Uh, weird. Hmm, that's weird. Yeah. Well, it's very we'll keep weird. an eye Lots out. Of weird stuff. Maybe keep you using that camera, but I think we should try to go to school. If that's okay. Yeah, you, uh, I really want to go after these people. Artemia. They looked up. I think they knew that I was there and they sensed my energy or from the lens or something and they looked up. They freaked out and they ran. So I'm not sure what could possibly be higher up. Did you see anything from what they looked in at? No. Okay. They just looked up and freaked out and ran away. Take well, a picture maybe of you me. You should go up. <laughs> and Heather poses. Do I radiate an energy? Uh, it's the same thing. It's very faint. There's just a, a subtle, almost imperceptible kind of red radiating outline around her. Okay. But when I go it? over other people it? in the mall, I did take it. You look fantastic. Oh, okay. No, no hold on. Make a, Heather, make a, uh, a wisdom saving throw for me. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> That's a two. A That's two. a two. You, um, Suddenly, through the viewfinder, as you take the picture, she begins radiating a huge, uh, huge, you know, red energy. And uh, Heather, you are kind of consumed by fear. And you, you look up and you don't see anything, um, but you just feel like there is something absolutely dreadfully terrifying in front of you. And you feel the need to get away from it. Uh, uh, ah! She just turns and runs. <laughs> Yeah, what the hell? Right. Does everyone suddenly have the runs? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really it's good. And Heather like is screaming behind her shoulders like, I don't know what it is. I'm just really freaked out, you guys. This feels like magic or something crazy. And she just keeps running. I want to pursue Heather to find out what the hell she's seeing because I need answers, yeah. damn it. I All don't right, see well, anything. I'm just kind well, of scared. It's like a vibe. <laughs> It's just a okay. Eventually, eventually, uh, after a few seconds, she calms down and uh, returns. Oh, guys, you know, that was you super kind of recon weird. reconvene in the parking lot. I feel like well, your camera's giving a power. Yeah, but there's uh, I don't know what this whole thing is of people looking up and freaking out, including you, Heather. So there's some kind of evil or I don't know, something's up there. Maybe so we should going maybe on. check it out. Yeah, I just don't I remember know if I... when I felt it, it just felt like something. There's nothing really to check out, I don't think. Hmm. At this point, Ramona wanders just... back over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she had disappeared. She talked some guy at the stand into buying her what's called a corn dog. <laughs> and so she just walks back up with the corn dog on a stick and some lemonade. Those y'all ever heard of the Horn dog? Oh yeah, just wait until you hear about pickle and peanut butter sandwiches. That's a hit. Mm. We get really creative here in the 80s. Yeah. Get very, very creative with Have our Have you food. tried it? Do you like it? Some... It's the best food I've ever had in my life. I don't know why y'all would ever leave this place. It is magical. Yeah, I wonder too. Well... I wonder well, too. The, the place is magical, but the people kind of are the worst sometimes. Yeah, big old oh, fart machines. Bless hmm? their hearts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess the general uh, consensus is that we head over to our high school. Yep. Yeah, let's uh, let's so. call another taxi. And Heather just like puts her hand back up. Wait, you're wait. now in a suburban. <laughs> you're now in a suburban, suburban parking lot. There are no taxis, and you realize that to uh, the high school would be like a couple, uh, not a long drive, but but a long walk, like multiple hours. Um, and uh, but but Wolf, you actually realize as after Heather ran away and you chased you, you're now standing 
next to what you recognize um, as Darla's yellow Porsche. And you remember that Ooh. she keeps her keys in an outside pocket of her purse. Hmm. I mean, we can take Darla's Porsche, and it's going to be cramped. It's definitely going to be cramped, but, you know, if she's not real, it's not really steel. Yeah, good point. I Let's don't do really it. love our moral grayitude right now. <laughs> um, it's not well, real. And neither does that dog, apparently, it's that's nearby. That's the reality dog. It's led the snow. It's <laughs> letting us know that this ain't real. <laughs> you know, if that's um, what you feel in your heart, Daniel. I'm just petty, I'm aren't just saying I, I won't I'm be a really part of petty. it, but I also like won't stop you, I guess. It's all really confusing. All right. Uh, we're going to need someone sneaky to grab the keys, and I say that without breaking eye contact from Martinia. Oh, me. <laughs> yeah. You're so kind. Um, I'll do it. I volunteer. <laughs> So you head back into the mall together. Well, I don't know. Does everyone go back into the mall? Yeah. Sure. We stick together. Okay. Squad for life. You all head back into the mall. And after some searching, you find uh, you find Darla and Tiffany shopping in Sears. Just mm -hmm. looking at clothing it's all the wraps. And she's got her purse on her, even... her right shoulder. I just broke up with well, her okay. and she's not let's, even crying. She definitely isn't Let's huddle up here. That's all I'm saying. Should we like distract her or something? Mm. No. I mean, you know her best. What distracts Darla, Daniel? <sighs> Aside from shiny things. Heather. Uh, give me your hand. Uh, uh, okay. And <laughs> she gives she gives him his hand, or her, he she uh, gives him <laughs> her hand. <laughs> and it, she's like, uh, he then uh, grabs her hand and then walks by <laughs> Darla while holding hands with Heather. <laughs> All right, as you walk by and you notice as, uh, as Tiffany taps Heather on the shoulder and points over um, and they both just turn and watch as you walk by. Uh, Artemia, are you sneaking up behind to steal the, the keys? What are you doing? Yes, I'm so I'm trying to All right, roll um roll s sleight of hand with advantage. Trying to find Okay, here we go. Sorry, my All right. Oh, yike. Uh I have 11, but do I have inspiration? I'm not sure if I use you have, it. You you're already you're already rolling with advantage. So roll again. Anyone. Oh, that'll do it. So as uh, as Wolf and Heather walk by holding hands and they're watching, um, you just sneak up and you carefully unzip the side pocket of her purse and you sneak in, pull out the key and you scurry off without them having even the slightest clue that you were there. I am very sneaky. Very, very sneaky. <laughs> You guys Heather regroup like outside of here. Heather like laughs and is like, ah, Wolf, you're so funny. And like keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you regroup outside of the mall um, and you, you walk back to Darla's car. Um, it is a coupe. So you... Uh, you pull the most um, outrageous clown car uh, job that you can with who's driving. Um, by the way, I, I assume I, I have my license and can drive, so I'll drive. All right. So Wolf. Also, she's uh, let, she's let me dro drive. She, she's 
she's let me drive her Porsche before. Okay, cool. So you hop in, and then <laughs> the three of you all um, kind of oddly pile in. Do you want to try to cram into the seat, or does one person want to, like, hop in the trunk? How do you want to fit into this car? Uh, uh, hmm. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I'm the shortest at five feet tall. And I know we're not that far from the high school, so I won't get car sick if I go in the trunk. I'm used to it. They always All toss right. me in the trunk. Artemia <laughs> hops in the trunk and closes the door. And then uh, you two kind of double buckle in the, the passenger seat, Heather. And uh, and uh, why am I blanking? Why am I blanking? Why am I blanking? I know your name. Chris Tell me her name. Oh, um, it's uh, Ramona. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Um, so Ramona and Heather <laughs> are just like double buckled in the front. Our team is in the back. Um, and Daniel, you shift into gear, hit the gas, and, and head <sighs> out. And you begin driving toward the high school. Um, Heather, though, as, you, as you're riding and you're looking out the window, you realize that uh, the route you're taking, you're actually going to be passing your house like any second. <gasps> oh my gosh, we're going to be passing my house any second. Can we stop? Do you Can need we stop? anything? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, I don't know. Mm. I, I, if this might be the last time I see my family ever again, that's kind of fake, but like real to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so you pull in the driveway. Like, <laughs> what was that? Has anyone ever told you that y'all are confusing? Not uh, directly, but I, I, I can understand how that would be. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is a lot to take in, but I, I promise things will only get more confusing. So, buckle up, maybe. You pull into the driveway and open the garage door, head in through the side door. Um, and as you enter, your dog kind of runs up arf, arf, and kind of greets you and is really excited to see you. She pets his little fuzzy yeah. curly ears. He's like, hey, um, buddy. You walk into the kitchen uh, and your dad is in there and goes, oh, hey, pumpkin. Your friends hey, walk dad. in and goes, oh, you only ever brought Heather one around. Though I must say you're the number one Heather in my book. Are these your <laughs> Thanks, friends? Dad. Yeah, the, the we're working on a project together. Oh, that's great. I uh I'm making pancakes. I'll make you all some some as well. Oh. That reminds me, I got a phone call from Principal Kenner. Did did you get detention today? Yes. Yeah, I did. It was what an happened? accident. There was a food fight, and it was kind of irresistible. But I'm really sorry, and I won't do it again. Oh, that's, at least it's just a food fight. That's okay. Did, but why, did you start it? No, but everyone left as soon as they saw the principal walk in, and I didn't see him. So I kind of got blamed for it. Well, that's bad luck. Hey, is that my guitar in there? I thought you weren't interested. Oh, yeah, I, I changed my mind. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, take Thanks. it, take it anytime you like. Thanks, Dad. Uh, so yeah, those, uh, those pancakes should be ready in, uh, in a few minutes. So make yourselves at home and uh, get, get to your project, Thank I you. guess. <laughs> Thanks. And Heather like tries not to cry and like kind of like turns and like ushers them towards her room, I guess. <laughs> um, to, um, or so at least maybe the... the living room to wait for okay, the pancakes. Yeah, into the living room. A few moments later, your dad, uh, your dad comes out and he goes, I hope you don't mind since it's fall, I made pumpkin pancakes for my pumpkin. And then he gives, you know, gives you all the pancakes. And Tia goes, I'll, I'll leave you kids alone. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. 
And Heather like sets down the guitar next to her and she like just stares at the pancakes, but she doesn't eat anything. Your dad's really nice. Yeah, he is. I don't know what to believe anymore. I think, uh, I think you, uh, believe what's in your heart. But if I believe what I, what's in my heart, then he's not real. Mm. Like, oh, this was a lie and I just don't want my parents to not be real, you know? I'm sure our past lives are real cool and everything, but this is all I've ever known. Yeah. But what if your dad and the people that you love are real, but in another dimension, like where we came from? Yeah, maybe they're based off of your memories. Our memories of people. I hope so. But I really just don't know anything anymore, huh? You're not alone. Thanks. I know we've only known each other for a little while, but you seem real nice, and I don't know anything else that's going on, but I know one thing that's real. Real or fake, your dad makes real good pancakes. <laughs> Thanks. And that's something you can believe in because you can taste it. <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> she is not wrong. Oh. Some good comedic relief right there. Um, <laughs> Heather Heather eats, eats some of the pancakes and she feels rejuvenated. And she's like, you know what? We need to save that world because that's what my dad will want me to do. And she like gets up and she grabs the guitar and she's like, let's get to that school. She's like, let's go. And, and, she, and she gives her dad a hug on the way out. She's like, I love you, dad. Right. Love you. You're heading out? Yeah, we got something to finish up at school. All right. He, he goes and he opens the door for you all. He looks out in the driveway and he goes, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a Porsche 928 GT. Whose is that? It's, well, it's my, my friends. They're letting me borrow it. Oh, man. How do you like it? Oh, it, it drives like a dream. I'll have V8 engine. Mm. Mm. I think, do you know, I think it gets up to 330 horsepower. That's what I, I read. Is that, I know it's not your car, I guess. Do you, but do you know? Is it, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it feels like it. Now that, that double wishbone suspension has a, a unique toe-in stabilizing effect that handles like a dream, I hear. Ooh, yeah. Oh, anyway, I'm, well, I'm, uh, I'm babbling. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll let you kids go. Hey. Um, hey, uh. Yeah. Mr. Banks. Want to borrow it? Mr. Uh, Banks? Well, well, uh, I mean, if we could be, borrow uh, the family car, you could borrow. Well, you oh, said yeah, it's not great. yours. I don't want to. Yeah, but uh, it's, <laughs> my friend's cool like that. Oh, well, if you don't think they'd mind. Yeah, let's You can take it. the station wagon. Okay. Oh, that'd be even better. That way our team can have a seat. <sighs> oh, yeah. How'd you fit that in there? Nice. Yeah. Well. He goes and he breaks the keys for the station wagon. He brings them out to you guys. Oh, awesome. Enjoy. Have fun, Dad. Thanks. All right. He goes, I'll see you tonight, sweetie. Be safe. I love you. See you tonight. Mm -hmm. And she gets and she gets into the back seat. Okay, you uh, you hop into the back seat, and uh, Daniel pulls out of the the driveway and guns it toward Hall Winter High. A few minutes later, you arrive, um, and you, you park. You hop out of the car. Everything seems normal, just as you left it. Um, 
And as you're, you're walking in toward the high school, uh, a car passes by and Kevin sticks his head out of the window and he goes, see you tomorrow, Artemia. He waves and his, as his mom drives him away. Kevin! Kevin! Oh God, I missed that dude. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I miss all him. about Kevin. Man, well, coming through with the frozen patties. A true hero yeah. in disguise. So that was you who had the frozen patties. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not time to hold a grudge now over frozen patties. I think we need to go in there and find the janitor's closet, or at least that's where I would look first. Yeah, let's go. You think he just hangs out in the closet? He doesn't have, like, an office or anything? <sighs> well, I mean, my memory's a bit shot. Isn't that where we were? Yeah. By that I mean I'm, transported I'm some... into another dimension. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder why we effect. didn't come back out of the janitor's closet. Like, you'd think that we'd come back out the way we went in, right? Yeah. But they had other plans for us, I guess. Yeah. So do we have to... Do we have to to fight this Jan Janitor? Yes, oh, no, he's, he he's essentially cleans friend. up after. Right, we're trying to rescue him. It was his job for well, yeah. him to bring us back, but he didn't come with us. Uh, yeah, he yeah. was supposed to come with us, but in this world, he uh, his job is just cleaning after a bunch of ungrateful kids and their vomit. Oh, I thought it was a lady named Jan the Tur. No, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, uh... oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Quite a name. <laughs> no. Well, what would you say he usually wore? Daniel, Heather, I mean, it was like... Lots like of keys. Jumpsuit. jumpsuit? Jumpsuit, usually of the khaki kind. Yeah. And, the khaki uh, lots. Lots of keys hanging off his belt. Wasn't he older? Mm -hmm. Pretty old, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to follow you wherever y'all go anyway, so it don't really make no difference. Okay. Okay. So well, let's, let's go. go look. Let's go. Right. You enter Hall Winter High. The halls are empty, and as you near the cafeteria, you step through a membrane field exactly like the one in the underground club. And as you step through, you hear a cacophony of crashes, explosions, and yells. Oh, it sounds as if the entire cafeteria is being upended. The lights flicker as you enter through the double doors to see Kenner in his suit and open collared shirt and Mattel in his janitor outfit in the midst of battle. There are huge chunks of floor and wall missing in places. And you watch as they both cast flurries of energy at each other. And these neon streaks swirl through the air and collide overhead. Mattel looks over, sweat dripping from his brow. Help me. Roll initiative. <laughs> Crap. 21. Oh. Wow. I really want a really good roll on that. <laughs> Uh, that's going to be a uh, seven for me. I got an 11. Hey. You run into uh, the cafeteria kind of uh, near Mattel. And Kenner looks at you all and smirks. And he extends his hands up to the ceiling. And suddenly from the, uh, the sprinkler system, water poof, spurts out and then freezes into a swirling vortex of freezing cold all around you. And I need, uh, let me see, I think I need each of you to make a, uh, da, da, da. oh, it's coming. Okay, so never mind, it just, it's gonna hit. That's what it's gonna do. Ooh, lucked out. All right, you each take six damage, six cold damage as this ice flurries around you and like 
coats your skin in ice. As the spell subsides, Heather, you're up. What do you do? Okay. Um, I want to cast uh, Dissonant Windspurs. I want to like paralyze him with racking terrible pain uh, through the melody. And the melody that I am singing this time is of course, Memory from Cats. <laughs> okay. Bringing it back to our first conversation with, with Daniel. <laughs> She's like, Memory! <laughs> and that's her All right, and that's a saving throw, correct? Yeah, yeah. So it's a wisdom saving throw. You have to get over, I think, 14. He, uh, he seems unaffected and he kind of, the corner of his mouth rises in a slight smirk as you <laughs> run into the cafeteria singing cats. Right, Artemia. Well, worth a try. You're up. Nothing else. It's a good bop. Is he's attacking all of us at once? Well, he just did. He just took his turn by doing that cold attack. And you're up now. Can I use a bonus action with two weapon fighting? Uh-huh. Your dagger and your short sword? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just only add your your uh, modifier, your plus to the first attack. So go ahead and roll to hit. I got 16. Okay, That's and what's the... the second? Okay. Um, and what's the second roll to hit for your dagger? 12. 12. 12. All right, you, uh, you charge at him with your sword and dagger and you jump up into the air, both blades drawn. And as you, you come down though, he just catches you in midair and then throws you back. Um, we go to Ramona. All right. I'd like to take out my long bow, aim for him, and as a bonus action, if this is successful, I would like to cast Hail of Thorns. Okay. Please don't suck now. <laughs> that's going to be a 20 plus 3 proficiency bonus, so that's a 23. You hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Six of eight. Nine, that's nine points of damage. And then with Hail of Thorn, at level three, that's 2d10 plus. So that's 13 points of damage plus six. All right, so 13, so six and 13, okay. Mm -hmm. Or is it 13 total or 13 plus six? 13 plus six. Okay. All right, so you fire, you fire arrow and it, it's, flies through and strikes him right in the uh, in the chest. And as it does, these this magical thorns appear with it and stick all into him. And he now, his shirt is kind of coated in blood with these huge thorns sticking out from all around his body. Uh, Daniel, you're up. I look upon this person and yet, even though I do not recognize them, a rage burns inside me so. So Daniel looks at him and says... Isn't it our principal? It, oh, yes. <laughs> you don't recognize but he's the, he's the evil. He's the evil, but he's also the evil guy, right? This is the evil guy, or, just yeah, the, but, or we only I mean, know him as the principal? He's our principal okay, for all of our high school experience. All right. <laughs> But I, I'm I'm uncharacteristically angry at sure. this principal. Yeah, yeah, I, you don't I, even I know him anymore. Burning. Yeah, yeah, it's like I don't even <laughs> know you. 
It's not even Look like it. I know you. I'm sorry, but I can't let you hurt our soon-to-be friend. I really don't know him. He kind of sent us into another portal and never said anything to us, but I can't let you hurt him. And so I, um, I swing my blade, but I am also casting booming uh, blade as I uh, swing. Okay. Uh, ooh, that's what I like to see. Uh, and that's going to be for um, uh, 25 to hit. All right, go ahead and roll damage. All right, so I'm going to roll first. I'm going to roll damage for the sword, okay. which is I'm going to just use this thing. And that's 11 damage for the sword hitting him. And then for the booming blade, that's going to be six. And uh, with booming blade, if he moves, he uh, he takes uh, 2d8 damage. Hold, hold on, sorry. He Let me see if he has to uh, do anything. Yeah, on a hit, target suffers the attack's normal effects. It becomes uh, sheathed in booming energy until the start of my next turn. If the target willingly moves before then, it immediately takes, uh, it says 1d8, but now since I a higher level, it's 2d8 damage. Okay. Cool, cool. Good job. Um, yeah, so you, you run up and with your blade, you, uh, as this, you strike through and you drag your blade across his body and actually like it hits his skin, but it also takes some thorns with it. So it's this crunching of thick thorns and, and flesh that you deep, you know, the sword boosh, radiates this huge explosion that kind of rips his clothing like even more from his, uh, his body. It's like tattered, his shirt is tattered now. Um, and we go to, uh, we go to Mattel who casts these neon streaks once again, like they swirl through the air and they all converge and strike in a huge explosion on Mattel dealing 12 damage. And as the, uh, as the magical smoke clears, you see Kenner, like his face, it, it's like melting and his body just falls and and melts into a metal puddle which then darts under one of the cafeteria tables and then suddenly boom the table flies over at you you duck under it as it flies and smashes against the wall behind you revealing the terminator it looks like arnold schwarzenegger is the terminator and all of a sudden, I also, I added that 2d8 damage. I'll add that in a minute. Um, he starts throwing cafeteria tables at you. Can you all make a deck save? No. I mean, Christ. if I have to. That's a 15. What, well, sorry, what am Eight. I rolling again? Dex. Dex. Dex, okay, thank you. 17. I added. 12, for dam 12 damage for moving, Ify, by the way, from your booming blade. All right. Uh, Dex, that's going to be 13 for me. Okay. Um, so the save was, was 15. Um, so if you rolled 15 or higher, um, you, you manage to dive. You only take five damage as the table kind of clips you. But otherwise, um, ah. this table just poof, decks you and knocks you back. Um, just gets out, clobbers you and... Uh, in the body, just knocks you back uh, onto the ground um, and deals 10 damage. Oh. He, uh, the Terminator Bad stands baby. and... <laughs> the Terminator stands and he glares at you. And we go to Heather, you're up. Okay. It's getting serious. Heather's never seen the Terminator, but she's like seen who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. So she knows this is a man not to be messed with. So she's gonna go for her acid arrow because that's given her the most damage thus far. And also she's just real mad at this point at this man who like essentially caused her to have like her first broken heart from Darla and like also all this stuff with her dad. She blames him for everything. So she's gonna throw 
um, the acid arrow, and that is a 16. The arrow flies and just his his head as you shoot it. He just goes. But is it possible even for me to have used my inspiration here? Uh, you have to use it before I give you the the result. <laughs> you have to, you have to decide before you're told. Uh, but I d- use I it did next round, Mitch. <laughs> Fine. Well, you got to roll before you tell me. Um, <laughs> all right, we go to Artemia. Oh, I think uh, Jenny might be having some some of those lovely internet tr- troubles. I hear you. Can you? Okay, cool. Um, what would you like to do? So you're cutting in and out, but it, it's because this battle is so intense that my senses are going in and out. <laughs> uh, but I'm assuming you're asking me, what do I want to do? And yes. uh, is there anybody attacking me directly right now? Or is, is someone well, in more trouble the only than I am? Is- uh, not at the moment. Uh, the only Terminator. foe is Terminator. Yeah, Terminator. Okay. I'm just gonna have to... I mean, it's the Terminator. I can't just come at him with one weapon, so I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing again, see if I can get better at it. Uh, All right. Bonus action, two weapon fighting. Mm. Go for it. Roll the hit. Oh, have a 10. Okay, roll That's the next with, one. That's uh, short sword, okay. What in the hell? I got another 10. All right. As you once again charge at him, um, he, right as you go to swipe with your sword, he, at an alarming speed, just boom, runs. To another part of the room, and you just swing and hit nothing at all. Ramona, you're up. I'm gonna go ahead and take aim again, and I'm going to hope it hits. 13 plus so it's 16. And if possible, I'd like to use my hunter's mark with that arrow as a bonus action. Okay. Um. So you rolled a 16. You said. Mm-hmm. So you fire the arrow and it's again heading straight at his head and it's boom, at an alarming speed he once again dashes to another part of the room. And your arrow just lodges into the, the wall of the cafeteria into like a, a mural on the wall. Well, Daniel, you're up. Going for. Hmm. All right. Seems like you haven't learned your lesson and you need another booming blade. So prepare <laughs> to feel my wrath yet again. This time that is going to be uh, 21. All right, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. So first for the for the for the blade for, for the blade. That's going to be nine damage. Okay. Um, and then um, for the booming, that's going to be a six. Okay. So you run up and you come down with your sword and he reaches up with his hand to just catch it. But as your blade hits his hand, it lodges in and sparks kind of fly out from his hand. And as you pull your sword away, it reveals a metal skeleton underneath. Um, Mattel, um, Mattel yells at you, he goes, get out of the way. And he he pushes towards his hand and you see a space near you on the ground start to kind of form into a ball of flame that suddenly boom, expands. And as the uh, as this flame clears, 
you see uh, the Terminator is now, half of his skin has been completely burnt and melt off, and you see with a red eye underneath half his face, half is a machine. Um, and the, the Terminator then dashes up to Mattel and grabs him by the neck, picks him up, and just smashes him down into the the ground and the tiles shatter and it creates a little mini crater. He then takes one of the cafeteria tables with one hand and just smashes down on on uh, on Mattel repeatedly. Uh, suddenly he stops and he turns and he looks at all of you and the lights go out. You then suddenly the lights come back on and you find yourself in a boiler room, illuminated by an eerie red ambience, and steam bursts from the pipes throughout the room. Oh. It's just you four. Um. Are we in a hot springs? (sighs) No, it's... I don't It's all. It's like a dungeon. At the bottom of our school, maybe? Yeah. Was that one of those robots uh. y'all were talking about? Actually, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Great, great I don't guess. Like <sighs> yeah, that one, probably no. Wolf. You feel like you hear a clanking behind you, and then. St- you turn around just as a man with a wrinkled face and a hat with a striped red sweater and long claws off of his fingers makes a swipe oh, at you. No. You instinctively jump back as his blades just miss you. And it's oh, now no. Heather's turn. Okay, oh. I don't think this counts as an action, but I would like to do pull out my guitar and I mm-hmm. I play a chord and I and I use inspiring leader and I um, choose up to six allies so it's myself, uh, Daniel, Artemia, and Ramona and I say and okay. and I say um, essentially like listen we're gonna have to f- probably fight a lot of fake characters that are from movies and TV right now. But we're here for a reason, and I truly believe in us. We're gonna rock this world and get back home wherever that is. And uh, and so with that, I'm assuming I can do this. Uh, each yep. of us gains a temp nine health um, per short rest. So that you can count all as add, action, right? Or it um, does. Uh, it it technically not... does. But, okay. um, but you can, uh, you didn't get to do anything last turn. Just go, just go ahead. We're, we're, okay, ha- we're having cool. fun here. <laughs> okay, we're having fun here. We're just having like a lot of fun. Okay, well then, then I would like to cast, uh, another, another ac- ac- acrid acid arrow. Okay. Um, Roll to hit. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 24. <laughs> that hits. Nice! And it's gonna do 14 damage. She's like, The acid arrow flies, and as it it hits him and explodes in this spread of acid, it it eats away at his his, uh, sweater and and the the wrinkled, mangled skin underneath. It lets out an angry threat, and he's, you know, yell, and he holds up his blades. Uh, and, and begins to kind of charge at you guys. Artemia, you're up. What do you do? Oh, well, I'm kind of fangirling right now because it's, it's, <laughs> it's him. I'm <laughs> so excited. But you're also going to try to kill me, so screw you. Okay. Um, uh, is he, uh, let's see. Nah. I can't do all that fancy healing stuff or anything like that, so I'm going to have to go with... Uh, Short sword. Okay. Go ahead and roll the hit. 
22. That hits. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Roll damage. Sir, I love your work. <laughs> I do. Damage is... Uh, seven. All right. You, you take your sword and you, uh, you do one swipe and you n- cut his hat right in half on top of his head and then you stab into him, into his body. And he lets out another cry and uh, once again, you know, threatens with his blade, kind of uh, not so much in an attempt to kill you efficiently, but more so just be terrifying before he hurts you. Uh, Ramona, you're up. and not looking at me at the moment. Uh, yes. Perfect. So I want to try and sneak my hunting trap into where he will step next stealthily, okay. if you will. I sure. would like to try and put it down and he's going to need to succeed on a DC 13 dexterity saving throw or take 1d4 piercing damage and stop moving. Okay, sorry, what was the, the... It was a dexterity saving throw of... 13. Oh, big fail. So he uh, he steps into it. So he uh, he rolled a two. So nice. you, throw down your, you throw down your trap in front of him as he is charging at Artemia, and goosh, his leg gets caught, and he lets out a scream, and then suddenly... You all, uh, how much damage was it? Sorry. I want to make sure I get this right. It's 1d4. Uh, do you want to roll that? Uh, stop. Yeah. Okay. 1d4 piercing damage. Okay. What? Oh, almost dropped it, but I didn't. All right, that's two. Damage, all right. He lets out a, a cry, and then suddenly, boom, the lights go out again, and you all wake up on the floor of the cafeteria. And as you again rise to your feet, you see that uh, that uh, Kenner is still over Mattel, but he now is in the form of Freddy, still. Um, and he had you in a, in a dream state. And now we go to uh, Daniel. He's, got, he's still on top of, of Mattel. What do you do? Uh, how close is he to me? Um, he's within 30 feet. Okay. So th- so would my action reach him, or would I need to move near him to make an action? You're at, you could reach him. Okay. All right. So then I get up, and I stare, and I say, I am so sick and tired of people messing with my reality. And he comes down with another booming blade. All right. He likes that booming blade. I'm a fan. It's uh, really great. Yeah, it's good cantrip, <laughs> but this does not hit this time uh, because I swung for a, um, let me see, um, 12. 12. But you have right, so inspiration. I... You do? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So I'll use inspiration <laughs> to see if I got, I keep forgetting I have it. <laughs> oh, this I one is too. much better. Thank you, Kelsey. Yeah, that's a 19. That hits. All right. So we're just going to roll this one. And that's going to be eight damage with my long sword and with the spell itself. It's going to be six. Wow. All right. You run up and you stab with your sword, and you actually hit right in the red <laughs> robot eye of the Terminator, just shatters his eye completely and his face is now sparking uncontrollably. Um, We then go to Mattel, who uh, takes this opportunity to rise up and he grabs Kenner and charges and pushes, like dives, and he pushes him through a cinder block wall, just goosh, goosh. They dive and break through, and this cloud of dust settles. 
and you follow and you step into this completely black room that you know to be the science lab. And then suddenly, <laughs> all of the Bunsen burners in the classroom light up. And Mattel stands in the middle, uh, looking around, but Kenner is nowhere to be found. Are you okay? <sighs> he, uh, he kind of, he shakes his head yes, but he looks incredibly beat up. Um, uh, does that, can, uh, let's see, can someone, can actually, can you all roll perception? Okay. Oh yeah. There it is. 13. I 22. Six. I'm in a room. Heather, you <laughs> Heather, you walk in first and you go, are you okay? And as you walk in, you hear a faint growl and you, you all look up to the ceiling and glistening uh, in, the, in the flickering light hanging on the ceiling is a no. horde of xenomorphs. And they all drop down and begin attacking each one of you with their tails and their bites. Wolf, you're gonna, oh, I think. <laughs> Everyone gets hit. All right, so they, they, this swarm of xenomorphs drop down and begin thrashing into you, dealing, oh boy. 18 oh. damage each. They dig into oh. your flesh and they cut you with their razor tails. Um, Heather, Heather, there. What do you do? Um, I look around and I ask my friends who's the most injured. <laughs> uh, who, uh, who looks the worst? What's everyone got right now? Who's the most? Who looks the worst right now? I'm at 20 hit points. I'm at 23 out of 50. I'm at 28, so y'all take care of yourselves. I got this. I'm at 45. Jenny? Okay. I, I cast Healing Word on myself, and uh, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to heal five of my own damage, and then I'm going to see if I have a bonus action. I... Can I, as a bonus action, like hide behind a, a thing, like a maybe like a desk or something, to just get um, myself out of harm's way? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can disengage okay. and, and do that. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna disengage and do that. Well, cool. so you do that, um, and then as that's happening, um, Artemia, can you make a strength roll for me? Yes. Not. 22. 22. Oof. You know, usually that's a really good roll. <laughs> um, but they roll real well. So as uh, suddenly they, they kind of swarm you and knock you to the ground and they bite you by the clothing and drag you out of the room through the doorway in through the double doors of the gymnasium across the, the hall. No puedo. You all, do you, do you follow? Uh, yes. Okay, so you all, um, you all run into the gymnasium and all of the lights, with the exception of the red emergency lights, are, are on. And as you step in, you no longer see any xenomorphs, but you see Artemia, uh, laying... Uh, kind of on the ground in the in the, the near the door of the the gymnasium, and then there in the center, kind of with its head head against the uh, the ceiling, kind of hunched over so not to break through the roof, is the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man.
and he takes his fist and he smashes it down above you. Can you all make a deck save? Yes. Twenty-six. That's going to be eighteen. Um, I didn't. Did you say so, Kel? What's yours, Kelsey? Oh, I can't hear you, Kelsey. Twenty-three. Sorry. Okay, great. So, um, all of you, all of you, with the exception of. Uh, Ramona and Mattel managed to dive out of the way, but you two are crushed, um, taking um, taking twenty damage <gasps> each. Oh! And then um, suddenly, uh, as the as he as he punches down, there's a humongous cloud of dust as this crater is made in the ground. Um, and as the dust clears, uh, Mattel and Ramona are both on the ground, barely moving. And Kenner is back in the center of the gymnasium in his human form with Heather's dad next to him, frozen mid pancake bite. I hope you don't mind. I thought your dad might be interested in your extracurricular activities, Heather. Now, I don't want to hurt you. This isn't your fight. And he reaches out his hand, and suddenly Ramona is healed, 20 HP, and gets up. So, be good children, and walk away. And if you try to stop me, I will kill your father. Kenner walks up to the crater with Mattel's lying motionless. Uh, still breathing, still conscious, but motionless. And he places his hands onto Mattel's chest. Kenner's hands turn to light as he plunges them into Mattel. And you see particles start to crawl up Kenner's arms and circle around his body. And you realize that Mattel is quickly disintegrating. Mattel lets out a cry as you see him muster his last bit of strength. He lifts his hand, clenches his fist, and then motions violently towards you. As he does, you see a rift in reality, reality hurtling up from the basement below, devouring everything in its path. It flies right at you, and before you can react, you see reality start to collapse into a single point in front of you. The last thing you make out is Kenner channeling Mattel's dissolved body into a glittering black jar and then blinking out of existence. And you begin falling through blackness, infinite blackness, up becomes down, left becomes right. You don't see no colors at all, yet you see every color purely in your mind. You hear horses uh, whinnying, you hear swords clanking, and you're falling just as you did before through the same rip that you did at first, and then suddenly, nothing. You open your eyes, and you're in the same town square where you first arrived. You're sure of it. The layout is exactly the same, except you're sitting on a bright green lawn, and you look around, you look around and realize it's now a park with a water fountain in the center, and there are benches all around. The surrounding buildings are now made of stone, brick, and concrete. And in particular, you notice an old man in an Adidas tracksuit sitting on a nearby bench. He stares straight into your eyes and without breaking contact begins to stand. As he gains his footing, he points a shaky finger at you, opens don't, his don't mouth and it. says, Don't you do it. Ah! And that's our session. <laughs> well, Mitch, you did it again. <laughs> Thanks for that emotional roller coaster. Why I oughta. Final episode next week. Yeah, so the finale is next week. Thank you so much, uh, Christina, for being here and for playing with us. I loved meeting Ramona. So much fun trying to navigate the 80s.
for our audience, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to follow on Twitch. Turn on those notifications so that you do not miss uh, the finale, which is airing next week, same time, same place at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on twitch.tv slash BuzzFeed Multiplayer. Make sure to follow at BuzzFeed Multiplayer on socials and use the hashtag The Dungeon Club for all fan art tweets, etc. And thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a crazy ride. I can't believe it's almost over. Season one. What oh, does Mitch have for us next? I can't. If this yeah, is no. the episode before uh... the finale <laughs> and you already made me cry, I don't exactly know. <laughs> what we're going to get up to next episode. So I cannot wait. Escándalo. See you guys next week. Uh, I hope my emotions can handle it. And uh, roll those credits. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. Damage. Choose your weapon!